Hey everybody. So today what we're going to talk about is a question that everybody keeps asking me over and over again. If you were buying a house, what kind of house would you buy and what would you look for? Because obviously I'm a home inspector. So this is my house behind me. So I picked this, but I had 10 things that I had to make sure that it had before I bought it. And we're going to go over the 10 things that I would look at before I consider buying any house. So let's get started with number one, but stay till the end because the last one is the most important one and you're not going to want to miss that one. In the meantime, do me a favor, consider subscribing, hit the like and hit the share and let's get started. All right. The first thing I would look for if I was going to go buy a house myself again, do, I would make sure that the house was block. What's the easiest way to tell if a house is block and not wood frame? So, so basically you look, Go to the windows and look at the windows, the how, if they're indented inside. So if the windows are pushed in, 99% chance it's block. If it was a wood frame house, the window would be flush. So really, really consider that. It's really important. I wouldn't buy a house that's wood frame. One, it's termites. Two, block is stronger. There's a lot of benefits to block. Now, a lot of the homes in Florida are block on the first floor and the second floor they're wood. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Like I have a bonus room upstairs and I'm going to do a flyover so you can see it. But if that's that's wood frame. So the second floor being wood frame, I'm cool with it, but the bottom floor I would definitely want it block all the way around. Some of the homes they're block and in the back there's a little part of wood frame. So that's really important. That's the first thing. All right, another thing that I would definitely look for if I was talking to a realtor that says, hey, I want to buy a house, I would make sure, I would tell them, I want the building permit for that house to be after March 1st, 2002. It's really important when it comes to insurance because they use different building codes after that date. So I would tell basically the realtor, you know, say, hey, listen, buy me a house that's 2002 and up like 2003, four, five, six. I would definitely um, look at those houses, but I'm not saying houses that are older than 2002 are bad, but the ideal situation would be a house that's 2002 and newer. So I would definitely look for that. It's not a must do thing, but I like that building code better because it was after a few major hurricanes and they really upgraded the codes and there's big benefits to them. Like one of the examples is, I'll put some pictures up here. It's like the roof to the wall attachment has what's called straps. Okay, so if the wind gets underneath, it's not going to blow the roof off. Or that's usually straps are usually with block homes. But if it's a wood frame home, what they would do is use clips, which is like a metal clip. I'll put a picture of that up also so you can see it. So that's just one example of the new building codes that were required after that date. So yeah, I would tell the realtor, hey, could you find me a house that's newer than 2002? All right, here's one that's really important to me that I would definitely tell the realtor, you know, I want to, I want this. Hip roof. So hip roof, check out this uh, video above that you're seeing right now. That's a hip roof, that's my roof. But it doesn't have to be 100% hip. And a hip roof is like a pyramid style, basically. So the wind can't grab it from anywhere. So I, you know, basically it has to be at least 90% hip. So like in the front of my house, you know, you'll see that there's a couple of gables in the front of there. But if you take all the perimeter of the house and you figure out what, how many feet it is, just don't go over 10% non-hip and then you're good to go. So I would tell the realtor basically, hey, the house you find me, make sure it has a hip roof. It's really, really important to me. All right. One of the biggest, biggest things for me, because I'm doing the top 10 things that I would look for is privacy. I like you could see that I have a swimming pool here. All right. I want my backyard to be private. So I made sure like I even have bamboo trees on one side and I, well, there's bamboo trees on the other side. So those houses are being blocked out. And then in the back, I basically have cattle and I have trees overgrown and I have a pond in the stream. So I wouldn't look at any house at all that has, you know, a house right behind me. So when I'm in my backyard, they can look out their window and 
and uh, see me, that's a no good for me. I would be like, no way, I'm not buying it. I don't care if it reaches, it has all the nine other things. If it doesn't have a really good private backyard, I'm out, I'm not buying it. And again, all, this, all these 10 things that I'm talking about are just my opinion. You guys comment below what you guys think. But in my opinion, if it doesn't have privacy, I'm not buying it. In the front, I understand you're not gonna have privacy because you have cars driving by, kids playing, and that I'm okay with. But in the backyard, it's privacy or I'm not buying it. Don't even show it to me. All right, so another thing, basically, I would negotiate this one, okay? And actually, Bill just showed up, and I'm gonna put him on the spot, Bill. Because Bill's a realtor, everybody knows. He was late for this video, so we started. But here he is. Working, work never stops. So we're doing the top 10 things that I would need in order for me to buy a house. Okay. Now, air conditioners, okay? Air conditioners, I would want them to be no older than 10 years old, okay? If it, they're more older than 10 years old, I would tell the realtor to negotiate. What do you usually do with older air conditioners? So at 10 years, you're gonna have trouble depending on other issues with the house, trying to get somebody to replace an air conditioner at 10 years. You might be able to get somewhat of a credit for the air conditioner at 10 years. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> never know. <laughs> you never know. So you might be able to get a credit or what you would do is ask for like things that you found on the inspection report and then you know, just get a credit for it, not necessarily a repair, but that would be how we approached it. All right, here's another one, okay, out of the top 10 list. If the roof is older than 12 years old, I would try to negotiate some money off if the roof is 12. And people are going to be like, 12 years old? That's, that's, but that's me, okay? But Florida, the roofs get really, really beat up really easy over here. So if you're moving to Florida, you know, older roofs, 14, 15, 16, 20 years, a lot of insurance companies don't like it. What do you think? Uh, no, I agree. So when an agent is actually listing the property, they should be taking into consideration those items, the age of the roof, age of the AC, when they're pricing the house out and they're doing the comps in the area. Yeah. So basically, AC, very important, and, and roof age, very important. Consider those things. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here's a important one that a lot of people miss, but they don't realize how expensive it is, okay? If you're buying a house, even if it's a 2002, 2003, and the, and the windows and the doors are reaching 20 years old, check every window and check every door because a lot of them are just bad, okay? They're not energy efficient. They're, they're hard to open. They're hard to close. And windows and doors are really, really expensive, especially in some areas you have to put impact. Like this door right here, this is impact, okay? And this slider alone was, what, nine, ten grand? Yeah, I think that's what you told me. Yeah, like 10 grand for one slider. What, what do you think about windows and doors? In regards to trying to negotiate credit a house, or replace? Like, yeah, like basically if somebody's buying a house and they have older windows and older mm -hmm. doors, is it something that you would even consider trying to negotiate? No. So again, that's what you're taking into consideration when you're pricing the house out overall. This is a, that it's a 20-year-old house. But I know example. a lot of realtors that what, um, that what they do is they just – see what's sold in the area and that's how they get the comps. So you go further than that? Well, yeah, you do need to go with what's sold in the area because that's how you get the comps. Right. And you should be looking to see, you want houses that are within the same era. You know, so you would need to know, like you can kind of look at the photos and stuff and descriptions to see if the windows and doors have been replaced because that might be an outlier in why that particular property was worth more money than the rest of the general properties in that neighborhood. Well, let me, let me ask you this question because obviously the inspection is not going to be done. You, you have to make the offer first and then you get the inspection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you as a realtor, because I, I work with so many realtors that I, I know this answer for some of them. You would look at the comps, but then would you walk around saying, okay, that's pretty old, that air conditioner, or those windows are pretty old, or that roof is old, and then- When I do a listing? When, yes. No, when, when, when you do a listing or when you have Both. a buyer? Both. Both. Yeah, so I look at everything when we're listing and when we're on the buy side. So when we're on the buy side and I'm representing, I'm gonna walk around, I take a look at the panel because I know what I'm looking for. I look at the- So like, let's talk about panels, okay? Yeah. So if it's an older, like, on this video, I said I wouldn't buy a house that's, you know, permitted before March 1st, 2002, because I want 
the newest right. building codes. Yeah, it makes sense. So that's just my thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, a lot it's more a lot houses. People. Yeah. It's just my thing. So, but those older houses, you know, they have some Chamberlain, some Zinsco panels, some Sylvania panels, you know, and right. insurance companies just don't like them. Right. And you're going to have issues with your four points. So those are things that I would typically advise you to will address that when we make either we can do it when we make an offer and bring it up straight away. Or a lot of people on the when, you know, the uh, competition on the other side from the listing, they're going to say, well, let's wait until the four point comes in. So we'll wait till the four point comes in and then we'll address it. Um, and then because like you said, you're probably not going to be able to get insurance. That's something that's going to have to get repaired or replaced prior to closing. So you can buy an insurance. I do know that there's other ways to get insurance that would cost the buyer some more money. And then they're going to have to get it repaired anyway. So this subject, so this subject is important. So if you're listing a home, so you're going to say, Hey, okay, your neighbor's equivalent house is sold for this much. So th those, those are good comps, but now you need a roof. You need an air conditioner, you know, so we're going to have to be a little bit lower because right. they're, the buyers are going to come back and say, right. So you do take that into consideration. Always. Yeah, you have to. I think every real estate agent should take that into consideration. No, I know some agents you know. that don't take it into consideration. They're just saying, oh, these three houses sold for it. But those three houses might be remodeled. They might have a new roof and brand new windows and doors. Right. And then to be fair, you know, that's why when you go to your listing appointment, the agent should be coming with the information and as close to a why they chose the price that they did because data doesn't lie. So if I've got an outlier, because everybody sees that, they can go on any of these forward facing platforms and go, oh, well, this house sold for, let's just say $500,000 and then everything else in the neighborhood's $400,000. Well, that was because that one was completely remodeled. Well, if your house isn't completely remodeled, then you can't ask $500,000 for your house. Right. I Absolutely. mean, it's, it's really, really important. So, yeah. But windows and doors, I'm going back to windows and doors. You're talking about like to do the windows and doors in this house. It was like $50,000 yeah. to do windows and doors. And typically, because I know you've done a ton of inspections for me, that a lot of times like the, where the couch is, you're trying to get the window open. That doesn't mean that you need to rip it out and replace it. Just no. it needs maintenance. It needs maintenance. And then you're probably never going to open the, the window either because you're going to put a couch there. Um, but I get it. You do want your stuff repaired. And I heard you touch on a point that I think is interesting. So I'd like your, your feedback on this. Swapping out your windows simply for efficiency purposes. We're talking Energy. single pane, yeah. just single pane, single sash. We're not talking jealousy windows or anything old. We're talking just regular single hung windows yeah. with a single pane of glass. Is it worth it or is it not to just tear those out and put two pane glass in? Nothing fancy. But some areas require impact now. Right. But we're talking just generic, generic. in general. Okay. We're not talking oh, coastal. They we're talking majority. Majority. 98% okay. of everywhere doesn't require impact windows. Yeah. But if you, my opinion is if you're replacing the windows, you might, well, as, you well might as well do it. I mean, do impact. <laughs> yeah. So, but they are more expensive. So that's one. So let's go to the next one. All right. Here's number, I think this is number seven or eight. But, anyways. <laughs> I think he said that was number eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I think> so. <laughs> reclaimed water. Okay. So I'm talking about reclaimed water for grass. Okay. Right. You okay. want, like, is it important? Because if you're using your regular water to water your grass, that bill is going to be expensive. Oh, so, yeah. so some neighborhoods, you know, they have reclaimed water. Some other ones mm -hmm. don't have reclaimed water. So right. they're for sprinkler systems. Even if you have a well, I'm okay if you have a well and mm -hmm. using well water. Right. Just for, it's not potable water. It's not drinking water. Right. But it's just water in the grass. It's water in the grass because if you're using regular drinking water, it gets expensive. What do you think yeah. of that one? Oh, yeah, it does. It, water is expensive, you know, unless you get like a, a Bahia grass that's super drought tolerant, you know, which still needs water. And water is not cheap. No. And we're going to go right into the next two also because these are the important ones too. It is drainage. Okay. <laughs> Drainage is extremely important. When you go look at a property, if the land is sloped towards the house, walk away. Not even walk away, run away. Okay? Because even some of these subdivisions, what they're doing is the, the land in the backyard is a little bit sloped towards the house, but they, they're putting the drainage between the two houses, and the houses are like 10 feet apart from each other. So during bad rainstorms, you can't walk between on the side of your house unless you're wearing boots. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Because that's where they keep the drainage on the on both sides. So walk around the house. 
And just think about it. If it's going to rain, say, eight inches in 12 hours, are you going to have flooding? Because that that subdivision in Sarasota, yeah. they had flooding. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you think of drainage around a house? So we're clear. Yeah. To be fair. Are Let's we talking because you said flooding? So yeah. instantly that's oh my god, there's water okay. in my house and flooding. It, and then you mentioned, oh, it rains every day and then it's marshy and you know it's squishy between Okay, the, let's let's do both. Yeah. Marshy, but I always do worst case scenario, you know that. So <laughs> nobody will buy a house. <laughs> yes, they will. Because if the drainage is right, I don't I'm not I know the engineers go in there and they're like, hey, we engineered this so the drainage goes between right. these houses and that's why the land is sloped on towards towards the middle it's like a little drain well yeah it's so that no one house puts water onto the other house so if you go to the neighborhoods you're going to see that there's a little, little curve curve down it's into the middle the between the easements on the houses because that's what's supposed to be there yeah and it's approved by, go and it's approved from the county yeah. and the engineers agree to it i just don't like it i wouldn't buy a house like that but your house has that no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Where, 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 where is the where Dude, is the drainage? It's, you can see it. It's right no, there. You see the slope? <laughs> it slopes that way. Nothing yeah. slopes towards your house and nothing but slopes nothing towards slopes. the other house. But the, a lot of houses with construction, the backyards are sloped towards the house and then the water goes on both sides of the house. Old. Yeah, the older houses, you, typically. But yeah, I wouldn't buy those houses. Yeah. This over here, if you look down here, it's everything's really sloped. So... Well, yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> well drainage around the house if you have land that's sloping towards the house i wouldn't buy it but that's just my opinion so here's the biggest one Mm -hmm. unless you want to have something to add to that one i can talk about that all day but let's go okay the biggest one i would before i even go look at a house i would i would find out what the elevation is for the house that's a good one let me explain to you why and i'm going to put some video up so you guys could see it behind me here there's a stream and then we have a retention pond Okay, mm-hmm. so I am basically, basically, I see all the water pouring here, and the neighborhood across the street will get flooded before I got flooded. Okay, when we had 12 inches of rain during Helene, it was right? Yep, yep. Okay, Helene, during Helene, like six hours. Yeah, we had 12 inches of rain, and we're like, oh my God, that's the most we ever had. The water was going over this dam, and I'll try to get some pictures and put them up so you can see them. But I'm not getting flooded, even though the water's in my backyard, because because of 11 feet difference, mm-hmm. because I looked it up, between this house and that neighborhood is 11 feet. I was dry. I had no damage, no flooding, right. and they had three feet of water. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the GIF, uh, GFS, and then you can get your elevations, or your survey will give you your elevations. Super important. Yep. So, so you know, some realtors when I when I first go looked at houses, I say, hey, what's the elevation? They look at me like I have two heads. Well, most people aren't going to know that, and. You well, that's why I'm that, doing so. this video, yeah. so so <laughs> Just, they know it. I mean, so this is the ten most important things that I would look at, in my opinion, mm-hmm. before I bought a house. Again, this is just my opinion, but that's today's video. Do me a favor, consider subscribing, watch this video over here because you're gonna like this one, and like I said, subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you in the next one. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.